Hey friends, in this video, you will learn how you can quickly convert any Python server to an MCP server, which allows you to connect any AI model to your internal systems. Now, the way that we're going to show that this works today is by using this example book API that I've created to teach others how REST APIs work. And this API allows you to retrieve books in a database, create new books, and by the end of this video, we will have an AI actually creating the books for us. So how does this work? Well, first I wanna show you how this API works without involving AI, just so you get a good idea of this project. So I'm actually just gonna type in ls, which shows me the files in my current folder. And you can see that the REST API is here. And I'm going to start it by typing Python and pasting the name of that file. And then it's going to start the server on port 8000. Now, actually I have this commands markdown file here where I've got a couple example commands that interact with my API. For example, I've got this curl command that allows me to get all books. So what I can actually do is I can take this command and put it into the terminal here. And then you will see that it actually creates a get request to that server and a list of books is returned. And these are books which are basically always going to be in my database because I've added them before. Now this is great and all, but an AI cannot actually call this API directly. For this, you need to convert this REST API server into what's called an MCP server. So how do we actually go about doing that quickly? Now, luckily, this server is using FastAPI, which is a very popular Python framework for developing APIs. And the nice part is, is that there's many projects out there which automatically take this API and create an MCP server out of it. For today's video, we're going to be using FastAPI MCP, which I'll link in the description down below. It's a super easy tool, and it's almost like a drag and drop solution. Let's just follow along and see how we can configure this. So if we scroll down, you can see that we have to install FastAPI MCP, and in my case, I'm going to do it with pip. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, and then in my terminal, I'm just going to quit the server and just paste that pip install command. And while that's running, let's see what the other step is that we have to do. So the only thing we have to do to just get started with this is add a couple of lines to our server file. First of all, we need to import the FastAPI MCP library. So I'm gonna copy that and put it at the very top of my file. Then we actually have to wrap the FastAPI app in this FastAPI MCP object. Now I'm gonna copy these last two lines and see where I have to find my FastAPI server. So in this file, I'm gonna search for fast API and I'm actually gonna look for the part where it creates the object. You can indeed see that in my case, I'm doing that on line 90. Now I'm actually going to put these helper methods at the very end of my file because I wanna make sure that I include all of the endpoints of my API in this MCP server. So I'm gonna just scroll down and before this file actually ends, I'm just gonna paste those two lines and we should be good to go already actually. So I'm gonna go back to this terminal here and actually clear out everything that you see. And then I'm gonna go back in my terminal history and I just wanna run python rest server.py again. Now you're not actually going to notice that much has changed. In fact, I can still use the rest API server as I've done before. I can rerun this command here on the bottom right and you can see that the exact same books are being returned. So let's actually go ahead and open Copilot now and connect it with this MCP server. If you're using any other AI code editor or AI tool like Cloud Desktop, you can follow along with this. You just have to read the documentation of whatever tool you're using. But the great part is, is that it's MCP, it's generalized. So if it works for me, it's gonna work for you as well. So let's get started. I'm just gonna open Copilot by pressing this button here. And then what you see is there's actually this kind of tool section here. And if I click on it, I can add more tools and I can add an MCP server. So you get a couple different options here, but when you're converting a REST API server into an MCP server, most of these frameworks will expose it as an HTTP server with server sent events. Nice thing about this is that you could actually host these MCP servers in, for example, the cloud and have other people access them as well. In this case though, it's only on my local PC, but still I have to select HTTP. Now, what URL do we actually need to use? To understand this, I'm gonna go back to that GitHub project because it will actually mention it here. Your auto-generated MCP server is now available at app base URL slash MCP. Now, because I'm using localhost, first of all, I don't actually use HTTPS and my base URL is practically just localhost with the port that the server is running on. So 
let's go ahead and just fill out these details. What I'm going to do instead of the HTTPS is I'm just going to type HTTP, then I'm going to call localhost and I'm going to specify port 8000. And the reason I use port 8000 is because if you look on the left here, this server is starting on port 8000. And then I'm going to type slash MCP, press enter, and then I'm going to give it a good name. For example, like books MCP server, that sounds good to me, enter. And then I'm going to add this to my user settings. And now Visual Studio Code is actually adding it to my user settings so that whenever I start VS Code, this MCP server will be available to me, which is great. And if you pay close attention, you will actually see on the bottom right here that there's this little new icon. This is actually a refresh button, which will make Visual Studio Code fetch all of the new tools which are available. So I'm going to click this button and you can see here on the top left that actually a couple of requests have been made. And this is what's called tool discovery. So Visual Studio Code does a get request to this endpoint and then a couple of post requests to figure out what tools are available because it needs to know that beforehand so that it could communicate to the AI, hey, you can choose to call any one of these tools. And indeed, we can now see that there are more tools available. If I click on this list again, you can see that the books MCP server is now available with a lot of different methods. Now, how is this actually possible? How did it already create so many different tools? Well, this is a great part about that framework. It takes your existing REST API and creates very logical tools from it. So for example, this get all books is an operation that's defined in our REST server. So I'm going to go ahead and open the REST server file again, give it a little bit more room and just show you where that is. So I can actually go to slash books and you can see that on line 98, we have a get endpoint, which is used to retrieve all books. And because we've defined this in our fast API server already, this MCP wrapper just takes that and is allowing an AI to query this exact endpoint as well, which is great news. But this is all theoretical. So I'm gonna show you that this actually works. First, I actually open a new window of Visual Studio Code because I want to prove to you that I'm not cheating with this and giving Copilot more context by showing it that server. This is just completely outside of the context and I'm going to open Copilot again. Now, if I switch to the agent mode, you can see that if I do all of the tool calling, those tools are available. I'm just going to only select the books MCP server tools and I'm gonna press okay. And now I'm going to ask the question, retrieve all my books. So I'm not even explicitly asking it to use the MCP server, but it knows that it has access to a books API. And you can indeed see that it's trying to run get all books, books get. So I'm going to click on continue and you can see that indeed the command has run. And you can also see the actual output from the server in here. And the LLM is then able to give you information based on that output, right? So in this case, it's just giving me a nice formatted list of all of those books. And I already know that this is correct because you can literally see that the output from the API is right here. But just to prove that it is, I'm just going to copy the title of this book, To Kill a Mockingbird. And then in my REST server Python file, I'm going to just paste that. And you can indeed see that it's part of the sample books that I always inject into the server whenever it starts up. So that actually works perfectly. And now I want to show you how useful this integration can actually be. So how about we let AI add a new book to our database? I'm going to go ahead and ask it to add any book you like to my database. Now, of course, that's a very random example, but this could also be a book that, for example, I recently read. And if I expand this API, I can just give a quick summary of the book and my own review, and then Copilot can just automatically add it to my database, which is a really cool interaction. So I'm going to just press continue here because I know that this is the right endpoint. Just to make you understand how it's doing this, I'm going to open up this code block. And you can indeed see that it created a request with a title, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, with a couple of other pieces of information. And then here you can see the output that the server gave back to us. And I know that this is the output because it contains, for example, the database ID in this case. So now you can see that it actually successfully added this book to my database, but that's just the AI saying it. Let's actually confirm that, right? So going back to my old Visual Studio Code window, where we did those initial requests to fetch all the books in our database, I'm going to give this terminal a little bit more room so it's easier to read. And we're going to run that command again. And then hopefully we will see that new book in the output as well. So I'm going to go and run the slash books endpoint again. 
And now you indeed see that we've got the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And I can just search for it here. And you can see that it's only present in here and not in those other calls, which shows that AI definitely added it just now. But there is much more to learn. If you want to become a real AI engineer, then there is a lot of advanced scenarios that you can actually learn here. You can, for example, learn how to only expose certain routes to the AI or add extra authentication layers to make sure that your AI can access internal services and even confidential data safely. If you want to learn more and become a real AI engineer, you should check out my community in the link in the description below, and I hope to see you there.